Hi all, in this video, let's learn about React hook form. So this library we use for the form validation. So ab about forms, so forms are very essential part of how users will interact with the applications. While you while the developers dealing with the forms, the main thing they come across is like validating the user input and also all the edge cases, which sometimes may be some pain, painful task for us. So with the help of this library, it would be like a painless task. So let's see that. So firstly, about this React hook library. First thing, the first advantage is it has zero dependencies. The second advantage is it is very small, tiny package, a very small package, okay? So it will not add more load to you. And it has a very good API, which will have, a, you can write very less code to do more things. And it uses a different approach in terms of validating the form. That is, it's not, it is not depending upon the state of that input field. It will depend, like a, it will work with the refs, like uncontrolled inputs. It will do the validation like an uncontrolled inputs. So because of this, the re-renders would be reduced. That is the main advantage, which increases the performance. So fine. So let's see how to do that. Mostly, let, let me start with the installation. So this is a sample React application. So I'm just installing React hook form. Okay. Just now install this React hook form. It was installed and now the second part is, so I'm going to the here, I'm importing. First thing is you need to Im install React hook form and you need to import use form. So this is, should be imported from the React hook form. So this is the use form is a hook, which helps us to validate the things. So let me explain about this use form. And now this use form, what does it returns? So it returns an object. So this use form, so what it returns is it returns an object. So I'm destructuring that object. Okay, it returns an object. So with this object, what does it give? It, it gives a register and handle submit. So these are the two things it is going to return us back. So I will explain about what is this register and handle but handle submit. Register, so register means all the input fields so whatever you have the form and all these input fields okay these fields needs to register to this react hook form they need to register to this react hook form so that you can validate its value and you can track its value changes as well so that's the reason you need to register the input fields to react hook that's the reason we are importing like we are uh, destructuring this register method so how to do that dot 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 we are doing this three dots like we are using the spread operator syntax so i will explain why we are using this spread operator so the syntax seems to be something like this so let me talk call this as a first name that's it this is how it looks and why we are using this spread operator before this because we are enabling the strict typing type checking so we want to enable the strict type checking. So that's the reason we are using this spread operator. So this is how we do uh, for the register. So that's it. It means like this first name field is registered for the React hook form so that this can be validated. And this can be like, you can see the value changes as well. You can track the value changes for this input field as well. Fine, the same thing you need to do for the age as well. So I'm just copy pasting here and just modify the name here. And uh, it would be good to have this name, name field, like a uh, first name, okay? And uh, name field, age. So this is a good thing to have, okay? Now, uh, let me replace this with the age, right? So like this, you need to register your method, okay? And how to validate this? So to validate this, you can use, so the same HTML, attributes so i'm using so in in the register method itself you need to pass a second parameter i'm passing this so what you want this as a required field yes i want this as a required field okay uh you can say this yes it is a required field okay and uh, for the age yeah you wanted to keep so whatever you can comma separate and you can give whatever the validation you want you can give here okay this is a sample i'm showing i will be showing this with the yup 
uh, validation schema library as well. This is sample how to do, how to consume this React hook form. And later you can, I'm uh, the second parameter I'm using here. So now I will use the min age like 18, a comma and max age like 60. Yep, this is a normal uh, validation I'm keeping for the age. Okay, so this is how you need to use this register method. Now, these input fields were registered, ready for the validation, and its value would be tracked. Okay, fine. This is good, right? So far, it is good. Now, coming to the handle submit, how we should use this. So this handle submit, we should give to the, this is a form component. This is a very much sim similar to our HTML, right? So this is a form component. So here, what we do, we will just lock like a, to this form field, we have an on submit property. To this on submit property, we'll be giving an handle submit and just call on submit method. Okay, just I'm calling an on submit method. And uh, this is a method. It Now I'm just writing an on submit method. Let's write just, we'll take this input fields. So whatever the form, like whatever the values you fill, that would be logged into the console just i'm logging it into the console so rest of the part like if you wanted to send that to the back end you can send that here okay and this handle submit will take two parameters one is when the validation is success so this is when the validation the form validation is success will be going to here so another one you can have this is an uh, on error so you can use this so whenever the form has some errors what to do so you can do here as well so that you can write here and uh, this is for the form failure. So whenever the validation is failed, so what to do? That is what. So where this on error should be given? This should be the second parameter. Okay. This is how we, we can handle the success scenario and the failure scenario. Whatever you want, you can give that here. To the success, you can give here. To the failure, you can give here. This is about the success and the failure part. Fine. So coming to the next part. Once we are done with this. So now we have registered. We have done this. So now if what if if you get any error, how to show that this field is missed, this field should be there, how to show that. So to, in order to do that, so below this, so just I'm writing some span or some para tag, any of the tags you can use and you can mention like a, you can use the errors, like how to use errors, like I can uh, show you the error part. So from where this errors will be getting. So we'll be getting the errors from the, like uh, let me show you. In this use form only, we'll be having one more thing, which is known as a form state. So this will be there. In this form state, again, I'm nested destructuring. In this form state, you'll be having errors. So this is what you'll be having. Form state, in this form state, you'll be having errors. Here, you'll be having all the errors. So we are taking this errors. And in this errors, if whatever the field was like uh, not there, so it would be shown that. For example, first name was not submitted. So we are saying that it is required. And if you're not uh, giving the value for this first field, first name field, so it would be returned back. Like uh, it will show an error. So in this errors is also an object and where we'll be getting this first name dot message. You'll be having the error here. Okay. I'm searching whether this field is there in the errors object, then show this first name message. So this is how you can show the errors to the users. So this is such a simple thing. We have installed it, imported it, created two methods from it. One is to register the input fields. One is to handle the success and the failure scenarios of the form submission. That's it. This is what it have, looks. So let me run this application. Fine, I'm running this. So once it is run, so let me go back to the browser. I will show you. I will open the local host. Yep, it looks something like this. So let me show you. So this is some render render count. So the reason behind this is like, I uh, wanted to show how many times this component is re-rendered. For example, in this form, we had an header component. So this is nothing like a fancy. So just we have used a global variable just in order to count how many times the component is re-rendered during the values giving to the input fields and during the submit form, how many times the component was re-rendered. To maintain that, to showcase that, we have used this header component and that we have included here, okay, inside this form so that we can understand how many times it is re-rendering. So fine, let's go back here. And uh, I'm giving 
uh, sample values here. Okay, fine. So if I if I submit, so the render is three times. So I think ideally it should be two times. Okay, uh, it should be two times ideally. Fine. So somewhere I did some mistake. Fine. If I'm removing this part, okay, and uh, if I click this, so the rendering part occurs only when it is needed. It's not for each and every child, it would not be rendered. So that is what I was trying to showcase. It only renders once and when it is necessary. Okay, that is the main advantage of this. This happens only because it is not dependent upon the state values. It is dependent up upon the refs. So it internally works with the refs. Okay, it, it means like uncontrolled component. Refs means like it will directly check this DOM and it will impact the things. Now we understood how this works and the reason it is not showing any error is we have just kept it as a required. So here, if you want, you can also mention any of the uh, text like a required. So you can, instead of just saying true, you can give a value. So this field is required. Just give this, okay, that's it. Instead of true or false, you, if you give this text, that would be replicated there. So now if you see here, if I replace this, okay, uh, I'm directly submitting this. See, this field is required. This is what the error you'll be getting. Okay, fine. This is how we need to handle the errors. So, so far, we understood how to take the values, how to show the errors, all these things. But now the another part which I wanted to show is like how to use the validation schema. Okay. Uh, and this would be your, you'll be getting when the, you submit, when you click the submit, you see a console, right? That you'll be getting here. Okay, and like this, you, you can register a number of things, but to make this more simplified, so what we can do is like, we can use a UP libraries, like form validation libraries like UP. So let me show you how to do that. So, so far, I think everyone is good with this, right? So fine. So let me show you how to use the form, like a form UP libraries. I'm using UP, okay, I'm installing this UP library. You is like a schema library, like uh, we need to define a schema and you need to define, give that schema to this form, okay? Then it, it would be right, it, all these use cases, edge cases would be covered. So for what we are using required, min, max, these are HTML attributes to validate a form, that's it. Not, we're not covering a broad case, broad edge cases here, okay? We're trying to do that with the help of this you validator. And along with this, we also need to install one more package where you will be defining the schema with the yup and that schema you need to give to this uh, hook, right? Like uh, to this use form hook. How to do that? We'll be having a resolver. So we'll be installing that. So that's the reason we are hook form resolvers. So this is a package, npm install hook form resolvers. So yeah, we have yup and yup form resolvers package now. So how to do that? Let's see. So I'm importing import star as yup from yup library. Now I have installed this yup library and now let's define. So constant, I'm defining the schema. So what are the fields I have and how I'm defining that? So yup, yup is a one and dot object. Now I need to define the shape of this object. So now what is the shape? Like let's, let me define the first name. Okay. And you dot string, that should be a string, right? The name should be string dot required. So you can use n number of things with the you. Okay. All the edge cases can be covered. If you wanted to give an, uh, like a website, okay? Like website should be like an URL should be there. Email, it should it will be having some sort of syntax. You no need to worry about that. Just if you mention that yup.sting.email, it would be taken care. Okay, yup is a famous library. Most of us may know about it. So that's the reason I'm not telling more about it. So this is like a positive. It should be a number. Yup, I'm giving age as a number. It should be a positive. And I'm telling that it should be like an integer. You, you can also mention that as a min and max as well. And I'm also telling that as a required. So like this, you can change the validations, okay? One after the other. Now I got a schema validator. So I'm only using for two fields. You can use for a number of fields, all the fields which are present in your application. You can use like website, URL, 
first name, last name, a text area, all the fields you can put here. And now we are good with the schema. Schema is ready. Validation schema. We have used yup to define the schema. Now schema is ready. We need to attach this schema to the form, right? Where we have the form? We have the form here. We need to attach this form to this yup. Okay, so that's the reason I guess this should be at the top. Schema should be defined first. Okay, I'm putting this at the top. Okay. I'm putting this at the top. And now we need to give this validation schema to this use form. So how we are going to do that? So let me show you. So here inside this, we need to give the resolver. So here comes the other dependency. So we need to import another like we have installed one more uh, library right that is like uh, at the rate hook form resolvers so this is what we have installed why we installed this in order to so yup resolver so this is a library we'll be having yup resolver with the help of this okay we'll be mapping this schema to this one so now here inside this a resolver okay resolver and now i will give you resolver and i will give the schema so here i am saying that this is what so here the schema was defined we have defined the schema with the help of this you resolver so this is like you'll be having n number of resolvers we are considering this you resolver because we have schema validation of the you and resolver is a property for the use form and we are attaching that you resolver to this schema. Okay. Now it means like we have attached this to our, the, the validation schema was attached to our form. So this is how we need to do the validation things. Okay. And the same, the errors would be there in the, these errors. So these errors will be there in the form and you can easily validate with them. Like uh, in this errors, there is an object, right? As I told, this errors is also an object inside the first name would be there. And for the first name is also it is you'll be having the message as a error message and that you can disclose. OK, hope you understand this. And uh, for the you, so most of them, if you feel like what this you means, so this is a validation library, so it can have a number of different things. So let me show it at a high level. So you means like if you want to, you don't need to ha handle many of the things. So see this schema has many of the things. If you wanted to give string required, a uh, string length and what is the length, limited characters, string min, what is that? So all these things will be having, it would be given. So with the help of this, you can define your validation schema and directly you can use that in the, any of the forms. It's not just for the React hook form. You can use this for the formic and any of the other forms also you can use. This is a validation schema. This is about the yup. So most of the cases, like we have covered the things, uh, why it is not resolved. Okay, I think it should be there from the yup resolvers it should be from the yup resolver okay now see it is working okay fine so if you if you if i'm not giving any age okay i i also you also need to understand you need to define this error most of the cases will forget this you need to define and in this error so you'll be having the age as an error so this is how so now all the errors if there is any error into this input field that would be triggered here that is how it works. And one more thing, when you wanted your form to be validated on submit or on change on blur. So where, where you, when you want that to be done so that you can do with the help of this mode. Okay. There would be a mode property that you need to pass. So here it would be mode. And now you can say this like an uh, on change or on blur when, when you wanted to validate your form that also you can give. So on change. So whenever you change, then you wanted that field to be validated or whenever you want to submit. So when on submit, so like you can give on submit on change. So this is how you can change the mode. Like when you want the form to be validated, that also you can have. So there would be a lot of lot more properties related to this. But this is a basic understanding of how to use it, how to validate it, how to use the validation schema in it. Hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks. Thanks a lot.